previously on Work of Art. For your challenge, you will be creating your own public art installations, working in two teams. I don't give a shit how much time we have left, but I'm not your fucking helper, dude. I have been through too much to have some stuck-up art pussy tell me life lessons. All right, the little off we're getting in. Oh, I love it up here. I wasn't really involved in the concept. My ideas were shot down. Your problem is insecurity. You don't deserve to be here. You! Then leave. Then leave. Red team, you've made a true work of art. You, as a team, pick the winner. Just so you know, this is for bragging rights and not immunity. Okay, Nicole. <laughs> Eric, it's time for you to go. At stake for the winner, a solo show at the world-famous Brooklyn Museum and $100,000 provided by Prismacolor Art Uninhibited. This is Work of Art, the next great artist. night and that was great it was a little bittersweet though because eric went home and there was a lot of drama and controversy with that eric was dealing with personalities that he didn't agree with i think we're both sad to see him gone i know that i've thought personally about miles playing the part of a tortured artist and showing himself to be different people in different situations whatever so I wake up, and the first thing that I think is that I could really go for some cornflakes. The second thing that I think is, oh, Eric's gone. Oh, man, that's such a relief. Yo, wow, we just had breakfast on the roof today. Oh, good. Hi, guys. What's up? How's it going? Yeah. Morning, nah, it's me. We wanted to see if you guys wanted to chill up on the roof, have some breakfast up there. Yeah. After the group challenge, there was just a lot of tensions boiling. It would be awesome for everyone in this competition to move on now, to just get to work and start making art again. <laughs> oh my God! This, this is fresh. The view from the Wayne Beaver house is pretty phenomenal. I can't imagine thinking I'd be in a place like this a month ago when I was flipping burgers. Yeah, we're really high up. There's seven of us left chilling up there. This is a really good opportunity to talk with the other artists. You've lived in Jersey, you lived in so many states along the East Coast. I've only lived in like Chicago in the suburbs. I was raised a Jehovah's Witness, which is a very strict version of Christianity. My mother was and is religious. As I got older, I decided that I did not want to be part of the religion anymore. And my relationship with my mother became uh, strained. Now I'm essentially an outcast from my family. Guys, there's like so little of us in this room right now. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, where did everybody go? Good morning, artists. Oh, We're eating breakfast and Simone walks in. It kind of shocked us and got us in gear. It is my great, great privilege to take you along with me to an amazing museum. <gasps> Yay! where some of the greatest contemporary artists show their work to inspire a new generation of artists to come. So, follow me. Awesome. <laughs> Everybody's super excited. Artists really love to see art and be around it. Let's go take the subway. Okay. Welcome to Soho one of the central art districts in the world. Come along. Back in the 80s, Soho was just the place where you had all the artists, Basquiat to Warhol and all the greatest galleries. I have no clue where we're going, but having Simone give us a tour is really enlightening. Oh, yeah! Here we are. Welcome. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Simone. I'm laughing. This is awesome. The Children's Museum. I'm so excited. Hi, guys. Come on in and take a seat. Welcome to the Children's Museum of the Arts. We brought you here in the hopes that this setting would start to bring you back. For your challenge, you will be digging deep. We want you to create a piece of art that explores the first experiences that shaped you into the artist that you are today. 
Now, to create your masterpieces, you will only have access to the materials here in the Children's Museum of the Arts. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm looking around, and they're like pipe cleaners and tempera paint and colored pencils and stuff I haven't used in 15 years. I feel like I'm going to throw up and sneeze at the same time because the tools that I have serve as a huge comfort blanket for me. I don't want to go home for not knowing how to use popsicle sticks. You'll have all day here at the Children's Museum to work on your masterpieces. I'm working here. Here, <laughs> until midnight tonight, and then one hour only tomorrow morning back at your studio to finish it up. Wow. <laughs> so please, be bold, be amazing, and I look forward to come back and check on you a little later today. Okay, guys, good luck, and I will see you at the gallery. Dude, look at those. Yeah, potatoes. <laughs> I'm grabbing pipe cleaners and pom poms. Anything I can draw inspiration from because I'm not excited about this challenge at all. Ah! It's a lot of fun trying to get back into this childlike mentality. And it's really amusing to see people sitting at these really low tables. I wouldn't be surprised if this looks exactly like a drawing I did in kindergarten, huh. you know? And then the judges will make fun of us. They'll be like, this means so much to me. Yeah, they'll be like, it's crap. You're not referencing art history. What are you talking about? This is art history. Yeah, this is our art history. Hopefully, I'll be able to make something that looks great and stay on to the end. It would be really amazing for me to win $100,000. Or, <laughs> I don't know, uh, $1,000. I have $24 in my bank account. Um, and actually, if my insurance kicked in, I might be negative right now. I'm not really sure. My sister does art therapy with kids and stuff. This is what she does, like, every day with kids. Is like... My twin sister's name is Corinne. My dad would have us do activities and we draw things and bring them to him like, look dad, look what I draw, this dog and this turkey and person. And he'd be like, mm, doesn't really look like a turkey. I promised my dad I wouldn't cry here. I see that in a lot of my work of this quest for perfection. Abby, how cool is this? Oh, may I use these? Yeah, oh, I'm your season one. <laughs> That's the only one I want. I want to pull specific childhood memories. I'm cutting these frames that start off with scrapped up rough edges and then get to the most perfect rectangle, which really portrays the way that I would do work when I was a kid. My relationship with my father is semi non-existent. I've been raised by my mom since I was one. So I'm making this comic book scene of my mom as this like superhero and I'm behind her. I'm almost like a little protege, sidekick, and she's like shielding me from all these crazy vices of the world, you know, almost how like by her giving me art, it kind of kept me on the right track. It doesn't go deep enough for me. Mm -hmm. Like it just feels like it's too surface. Mm -hmm. So it feels like you need to do like eight more. I think the key to staying in this competition is making the challenge work for your art and not the other way around. I'm going to remake a piece from the series of pieces that I did about nine months ago when I was just really sad and super depressed and anxious. The only thing that I could do during that period was make these geometric designs. So even though my piece isn't reminiscent of childhood, I feel good about it. I think it'll work. Jackie is moving pretty slowly on her piece. She seems to be having a hard time trying to figure out what she wants to do. This challenge is definitely difficult for me because personally I find it hard to think about memories from my childhood. As a child I was very lonely. It sounds sad but I would just like go in the bathroom stall and like eat my lunch alone. But I'm going to have to deal with my feelings of isolation if I want to stay in the competition. Coming up on Work of Art. Mother. You recreated the work you must have done when you were 11 or 12 years old. They're not totally overwhelmed by it. You better get your act together. So we have
have until midnight tonight and one hour tomorrow to make a work of art inspired by the memories that will inform us as artists and we can only use the materials that are in the room. Why can't kids have knives? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. I need a knife. Oh my god. Trying to cut these pieces without an X-Acto blade or like a mat knife. Mother is almost near impossible. I'm surprised they don't have staplers here. Yeah, that's what I was looking for, but you just have to improvise. Growing up in a small town where not a lot of people speak English and walk to work eight or ten blocks, I never really had quote unquote art supplies. Instead of using white paint, I would use my mom's whiteout. Or instead of using any nice materials, I'd be using masking tape and whatever pens I could steal. I remember spending a lot of time drawing in notebooks. So I decided to make a children's book about my life and how I got to be, um, quote unquote, an artist. My dad saved all my sketchbooks from when I was little. They're like 12, like they're like yours. Yeah, they're that's like so cool. Small. I did a lot of like weird sex for my life, but it's super embarrassing to look back on now. Like my poor baby face, <laughs> like, this is how babies are born. Mm -hmm. I am making a sculpture that introduces people to my childhood and how I became an artist. I was raised in San Francisco in an urban art commune called Project Arto. It was a very incredible place to grow up. There was just a lot of experimentation and there was a lot of drug culture and stuff going on that introduced religion and sexuality in a really different way. So this piece is this idea of like a child at an adult's party. I'm finishing up my, my Little Pony by doing sex and escort ads as the final layer. I finished up my candy balls and I'm making cigarettes out of chalk and dipping them in glue. Like all the things that make me think of parties and all the things that make me who I am. I don't know what I'm doing. My childhood years weren't necessarily the best years of my life, but over time, making art became a method for me to communicate myself. So I started to play and experiment to see if it would trigger any memories. I remember they told us in school one time that left-handed people were more creative. Yeah. And I got so pissed off. I me too. I exactly. I thought I was creative. As I'm working on this piece, like these memories are coming up that I haven't thought about since I was that age. Yeah, the pencil, I'm really digging that. It's reminding me of the time when I was really, really close to my mom. She would always tell me, you know, if you keep up with your art, then maybe you could do these illustrations someday. That actually really encouraged me. I know my mother still loves me to death, but she like, like she has to treat me a certain way because you know, be, because she doesn't really, um, she doesn't like respect like my, my life choices, but she is the reason that I'm an artist and she gave me all the initial impetus to do the work that I do now. <sighs> I think it's almost time to take a small break. These balls are not sanitized. Yeah, they're not. There are so many terms right here. I don't care, though. The ball pond is so awesome. They're like huge, bouncy balls. Nicole. <laughs> I like Nicole a lot. It would be so fun to bring Nicole on a date because it would probably be magical. There would be a tree fort involved and Christmas lights. It has been pretty obvious for a little while that Miles and Nicole have a heavy flirtation going on. <laughs> Good for them. Maybe it'll make them weaker in the competition and help out the rest of us. It's time for me to go up and actually do some work. I get classroom puzzles. This isn't playtime. This isn't playtime <gasps> for me. Okay? It's not like I'm trying to make little magic ponies. Children. I brought you some snacks. Oh, cool. Yay. Show me what you're up to. I wanted to try this sort of experiment where I'm trying to draw like a child. So I put my pencil in my left hand. I just practice sort of drawing with this like forced jerky line and trying to do drawings that I would have done as a child. So you understood the challenge of doing a drawing like a child? That's well, how that's, that's how I'm interpreting it. Were your drawings as a child similar to what you've just done? When I was very young, yeah. A uh, three-year-old or, or slightly older? Maybe like five or six or something. I'm not totally overwhelmed by it when I look at it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if we were three years old, I would be utterly impressed. <laughs> I don't know whether this is a way to interpret the challenge. 
Once again, he's concerned that my piece is going in this very literal direction. Great, Many thank sense. you. And I was like, oh, shit. There are a few things in this piece. Um, it's really about how I became an artist. I attribute a lot of that to my mom. My mom was a single parent, so I was, and I was the only child, so drawing was like what I did all the time. <laughs> I feel you recreated a work like you must have possibly done when you were 11 or 12 years old. I'm kind of bothered now that it looks like an 11-year-old did it. Ultimately, you're going to do something good if you really follow your own gut feeling. Simone seemed disappointed with some of the work being more about drawing how he used to be like a kid. See you tomorrow. I couldn't really agree with him more. Hey, Nicole. Hi, Simone. Nice how are you? Very, very well. So, what have you been up to? These two paint brushes represent me and my sister, and underneath it is this kind of lunch box type of thing. And how will you present them? Uh, a flat on a surface, or will you hang them on a wall? I'm going to hang them actually like so, but up, suspended up in the air. So it's like layers of your memory. Layers that are bringing foggy memories to the surface. What I like about your approach is that you're not recreating the type of works you would have done as a no. little girl, uh, but at the contrary, use your childhood memories in a very poetic way. So yes. thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you as well. Bye. I always say, if you like candy, you want to work in the candy store. Mm -hmm. And right now I feel like in the candy store. And these cigarettes are done out of... Um, chalk? Uh, chocolate. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, uh, chalk, chalk, chalk. Okay, okay. I've even got the pretend lipstick prints. Yes. For the birthday party. <laughs> I grew up in San Francisco, and right when I was young, um, AIDS hit my city, and so we lost a lot of people. I'm trying to recreate the innocence with my experience as a young person, and I started making this paper mache toy that is evocative for me and my youth. I really like the idea of this really long, ongoing tale. What you're doing in, in the work is trying to evoke your awakening as an artist, and yet uh, bringing in the non-childhood elements that began to play an influence on your life, and uh, that has the potential of doing something interesting there. Keep it up and go for it. Thank Many you. thanks. Thank you. Well, I just finished this part of the piece, and basically what I did was take an entire roll of duct tape and organize it into this symmetrical kind of grid-like design. In what way does this work, uh, you know, in call your childhood memories? It doesn't. I, I, I don't think there's anything um, about my childhood that would reference appropriately the topic of this challenge. You consider yourself an artist today? I don't know yet. I don't consider myself not an artist, but I don't think I'm fully there yet. I definitely have personality conflicts with Miles. He's very talented, but overall I see him trying to get away with as much as possible. He's made that piece before. I see that as cheating, and I don't have a lot of respect for cheaters. The fact that it's just black and white, is there a reason for that? The idea behind it and the work itself is so conceptual that I did want to keep it really simple just because I didn't want anyone to be bogged down by a flashy kind of design. Okay. Thanks, Simone. Thank you, Miles. How are you? Well, I finally just uh, figured out the process I'm doing like an hour ago, so now I'm like on fast track. But okay, what did you figure out? When I was a child, one thing I really liked was when I would fold a piece of paper in half after painting it, mm -hmm. and then open it and there'd be like an abstract image because there's this element of surprise. On their own, I don't think, besides just looking messy, that they are particularly appealing yeah. but, and I saw at the other table you were preparing some stuff with uh, some pipe cleaners and fluffy material and all of that are you going to use any of that no, in your I work? I don't like it you, You've changed your mind? Yeah. So you're going down that road? Mm -hmm. Like did you think the pipe cleaners were more interesting or something? Well I thought there was something intriguing about it but um, you know you have to do what yeah. you feel inside you is the right thing. I'm scared that I'm not going to do a good job on this challenge. Thank you so much Jacqueline. I, I want to say something that has significance, but it's a hard thing for me to be really open. Otis, you have the whole night to get your work completed and one hour tomorrow. I must tell you that I'm quite concerned with what I've seen so far. I am slightly unimpressed, to put it mildly, so you better get your act together, is all I can tell you. At this point, morale just, like, crashes. Even the people who Simone gave a good crit to don't seem very optimistic. This all the more that I want you to be fully aware that there, nobody is going to get immunity from now on on to the end of the competition. So... No. 
So you really got to get it right. And I'll see you tomorrow at the exhibition. Thanks, man. Now that there isn't any immunity, I feel like it's going to make people push it a little bit harder. It's crazy how, like, when somebody reveals something to you about your own work, things just completely shift. I take a step back, look at my piece, and I agree with them. Like, I'm looking at it, and it's kind of cliche. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I don't even want to bring this close to the gallery wall. Coming up on Work of Art. Doing. I like that. Mark's piece is kind of a cop out. So I make rubber band balls. I didn't really realize it. Miles is kind of like this big douchebag. I think one side's a little lopsided. <laughs> Once Simone leaves, a lot of us are questioning some of the ideas we're having. One piece of artwork that I haven't quite figured out is Peregrine's. Peregrine had a very weird childhood growing up in a very drug, kind of hippie culture, and her piece is definitely referential to her as a kid, and I guess that's what this is supposed to be all about. Wow, that actually looks exactly like the toy. Yeah. Wow. Thanks. I saw a lot of them in my life. Children thrive under harsh conditions, and it was a blessing that my parents were willing to let me be cared for in the company of all different kinds of people as a kid. Survey question. What are some of the things people used to ask you to draw for them? Ponies. Ponies? <laughs> different cars. Cars, yeah, I wrote that. I took to heart Simone's concerns. I feel like he was definitely dead on, you know? Like, the piece I was working on, it just wasn't good. And even though I wanted to do a tribute to my mom, I wanted to flat out win this challenge even more, so I've decided to do something different. Nike, the Nike swoosh. Yeah, I said the Nike swoosh, yeah, shoot. Uh, bugles. Yeah, you're gonna remember that, oh my Rainbows. god. Rainbows. Rainbows. I'm doing a set of drawings of things that people would have me draw when I was in school. Spider jets? Jets. People wanted me to draw math equations. Quadratic formula, go. Do you remember it? A squared plus B squared. Oh, no, no, <laughs> I use that thing all the time. Cool. I'm making these abstract paintings, but Simone just thinks the work I'm doing right now is a little unfocused, and he suggests doing something maybe sculptural with the pom-poms and pipe cleaners, but even though I really want to listen to him, I can't figure out what to do with them. I definitely don't want to go home, so I'm working really hard to try to come up with some kind of solution to this. I do agree with Simone, and I do get a little bit worried. I decide that I need to add another level to my piece and make it more complex, but stay in the same direction. There's so many emotions going into this piece to make it a strong one. Hopefully, that will come across to the judges. You know, it's kind of too literal, which has been my problem the whole time, so. I think that's my problem, too. A lot of us underestimated how difficult this challenge is going to be. We're to a point in the competition when every piece counts, so the stakes are just that much higher. We have a half hour, so we got to be out. I don't think Simone was really impressed by what I'm doing. So I want to do something fun and playful with color. I found this huge bag of rubber bands that were red, yellow, and blue. So I make rubber band balls to add some color to my piece. I didn't really realize it until very recently, but Miles is kind of like this big douchebag. He is not doing the challenge. His way of solving that was by making rubber band balls. So serendipitous that these are primary colors and I'm using black and white. Oh, God. Ten minutes left. What am I doing? <laughs> Time's up at the museum, and I got a lot to get done for the mob. It's getting down to the wire, you know? It's not too many of us left. No more immunity. I definitely don't want to go home. This challenge is a lot more complicated than any of us thought. Oh. And it's been a, emotionally a hard day. It was the two of us. Especially with Ryan tapping into uh, the younger struggles that he had as a kid. To have the entire conception of it, it's more important than the actual product. Like, my piece isn't something that I would normally be proud of, but like at the same time, I have a way of explaining it, which I think will work. Ryan, I love you, but you look like you're drunk, <laughs> stoned. I look like I'm dead. Yeah. What I need most at this point 
is to sleep on it. With art, you make it and then you go to sleep and then the next day you wake up and it could turn into a very nice wine or it could turn into vinegar. This is going to be one of the most personal gallery shows. Facing the critics is going to be pretty tough because it's not only about your artwork, it's about you. Everyone is nowhere near done. Jackie's running around. Abby's stressed out. Miles is confident as ever, which is no surprise since he's made that piece several times. Ah! This morning, I'm mostly just meditating on my work. And I just sort of try and remain in a positive, non-stressed mindset. I've decided to add construction paper, which I tore apart. I'll dump them out onto the floor in front of the wall and carefully dishevel it, like I do to my own hair. This morning, I think I came up with a pretty good way to pull the piece together. I'm thinking about how, as a kid, I really loved to climb trees. It was definitely a place for me to escape and deal with my feelings of isolation. I decided to hang these pipe cleaners and pom-poms from two sides of the canvas, insinuating that they're hanging from the trees. And it's this really playful element that will tie the piece together. Jackie, her piece is really, really cold. Makes me want to put on a coat, some galoshes, some mittens. Guys, we have 10 minutes. Are you gonna lay them out in a grid? Yeah. I really wanna win this challenge. I feel really strongly about this piece. I feel like I definitely get a lot of my drive from my mom. She works hard every single day. If I don't do my best, I will have really let her down. I figured out how to end it, just like that. What do you think? I like that. Okay. Just don't talk about it too literally. Otis, your time is up. So can I please ask you to take your works and come with me this way? Coming up on Work of Art. I'm having a problem, and I'll tell you the problem I'm having. There's no risk, there's no story. Man, I'm disappointed. You have deliberately removed yourself completely from the exercise. Simone comes in and he's his usual jovial self. Oh, cool. Yay! Why don't you come here and eat your snacks so you have strength and energy to continue amazing work? A porn magazine? <laughs> Simone! <laughs> oh, cool. A juice box. Juice box! <laughs> wow. You feel this immediate rush of nostalgia. Snacks and juice boxes, which is really cute. Thanks, Simone. Hello, everyone. Hi. Please welcome back your judges. Critic Jerry Saltz. Hi. Gallery owner Bill Powers. Hey, guys. Jeannie is away this week curating a show in Europe. And your guest judge for this challenge, celebrated New York painter, Will Cotton. Oh. oh my god, Will Cotton, totally amazing painter. Does all these great things with candy and femininity. It's so cool. Your challenge was to create a piece inspired by your memories of how you became an artist, using only the materials provided at the Children's Museum. Let's see how you did. I'm feeling he's telling a life story uh, yeah. through symbols. A baseball hat, Superman. Sure, the sports. Discovery of Eastern religion. I find it interesting that people, when they can't draw, they're like, oh, I can't even draw a straight line. So it's really a piece about the role of the artist. And we'll see how the judges think. The origin of Mark Velasquez. So there's like a handmade artist book that uh -huh. he's done. 
I made my children's book in kind of a comic book style, illustrating the finer points of the things that inspired me as a kid and made me an artist today. This is a side of Mark that we have not seen before. Let's check out the next piece. All right. Peregrine. It's called Rainbow. That's ballsy. This was a bit of an homage to people that I've known and people that I'm related to who have died of AIDS. I've really given a lot of myself. This is the unicorn I wanted to make when I was a kid. You I wanted to make a unicorn? Absolutely. I thought it was a girl thing. Not just a girl thing. I, no. My mom taught me to draw horses. I drew trolls. <laughs> Yeah, do you think this is what they give the children to use as a... Oh, like a palette? Mm hmm I use styrofoam plates to sandwich little vignettes of specific memories that I've had. It actually looks like a solid piece of art. I was making this and, like, remembering stuff, and I, like, started crying. I think he's really trying to get back into the mind of being a child. The work is about a cathartic event, about sort of excavating into my past and bringing emotions out to the surface. So you got a little bit of like a Rorschach vibe going there, almost like a family tree. The fact that I made this very cold image of a tree, I think that actually says a lot more about me than people think. Hopefully the judges will like it. So. Talk to us, yeah, it's totally... Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> That's revisiting child materials as an adult. When I relate this to my childhood, I think of Space Invaders. My piece shows this really rough time in my life where I was depressed and anxious. I use those different feelings to get to the place that I want to be as an artist. to see the following artists for the crit. Abdi. Nicole. Peregrine. Ryan. And Jacqueline. Miles and Mark, that means you are safe and can move on to the next challenge. You can say goodnight to your peers. Mark. Ryan, let's start with your piece. I began by trying to draw the way that I drew when I was very, very young. In this process, the memories just started hitting me. I mean, this piece deals with my relationship with my mother. My relationship with her now is very conflicted. I understand how your experience was probably the most intense part of this. And so the question is, how do you communicate experience? Because that's what art making is. Could you talk a little bit about the relationship between what's on the floor and what's on the wall? The stuff that's on the floor is the first drawings I made in the sketchbook, which I tore out because they weren't working, led me to this. For me, this is a lot more interesting than what's going on up here. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of an idea of what it means to be an artist inside as a kid. None of that, Ryan, for me, is in your work. Okay. Ultimately, it felt contrived to me. I feel like your process is a lot more interesting than what we're looking at. It looks like a kid did it, mm -hmm. and nothing more. Okay, let's move on. Peregrine, can you tell us about your piece? I started making these cigarettes out of chalk and these different vices, like joints and crack files, implying that there was this crazy party going on, that there's all these really interesting people, and wanting to relate to those people as a child. And then, as I grew up, a lot of the people around me as a kid died from AIDS. It really tore me up. Peregrine, I think you did an amazing job with this. I honestly, when you were talking about this, I got a little teared up. Why? Maybe because I'm the only, you know, parent out here, seeing the candy and the drugs mixed together. Like it's problematic? Well, I hope it's not going to be problematic for my kids, but I, I mean, I really like that, and I thought it was very touching. Thank you. It has sort of songs of innocence and songs of experience side by side. Thank you. This is what I mean by having a main event and a great supporting cast of characters and details that tell the story. Thank you, Peregrine. Let's move on. Okay, Jacqueline, why don't you step up and tell us about your piece? Every moment of discovery for me as a child was in trees. 
I used to hide in them. They made me feel safe. I would find bugs in them and put them in little observatories. And so I wanted to convey that playful element, so I put the strings here. The story is pretty amazing. You're up in trees, you're finding bugs, you're having secret worlds. Very little of that is in the work. I would say almost none of that is in here. I have no emotional reaction looking at it. Is there some element of your backstory that we're looking at? I think that as a child, I just felt like very isolated, I guess. Like I hid and I played alone. There's no risk, there's no story. I, I just, I'm lost in this piece. You know, I really tried to make something other people can relate to. When you're in the studio, it's really important not to think about what other people can relate to, but just make sure that you can relate to it. Okay, Nicole, why can you tell us about your piece? I wanted to create specific vignettes of memories. The bottom one is a clay salamander. Being a little kid and lifting up that rock and that discovery of that salamander there is like you discovered the universe. What I like about the piece is that it did create a big mystery for me. The same way the last time I really liked a piece from you was with the found sculpture. The design sense is very, very strong. And I like the level of obscurity of the information that you've put inside of it. It, it feels just right to me. I think one of the things that makes this piece so successful is that it's deeply personal to you. Feeling that you have a secret that if we look deep enough we can find makes it compelling. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Abdi. Being in school, I was called upon as the artist, like, oh, Abdi, can you draw me a star? Can you draw me a circle? Can you draw my name in bubble letters? And for me, it was a really refreshing idea to know that I was needed in the small society of school. I'm having a problem, and I'll tell you the problem I'm having. I'm not getting anything from Abdi at all. It's a blank slate. Is there any one image on this wall that resonates for you personally? The Spider-Man definitely does. The Mighty Ducks logo. The Superman logo. <laughs> They're all the connected. Theme. See? That's making a better piece for me already. And I think that's what's missing here is actually editing. You just kept making pieces and then at a certain point decided to turn them into a square, but there's no framework in there. You have deliberately removed yourself completely from the exercise. Okay, we have plenty to discuss. You can head up to the studio until we call you back. <sighs> that was a really hard challenge. That, yeah. No, it really was. Yeah. Wish I could do that one over. Dang. So how do we feel the artist did with this challenge? I think it's a fine line between creating something that speaks to your childhood and creating something that comes off amateurish. Okay, let's talk about some of the pieces that were more successful. Peregrine was such a natural with this material, with the color and with the scale, but most of all, she took a risk, and I think that that risk has really paid off. It's very complex, it's very deeply personal. Her talking about how it was related to HIV or people dying of AIDS, I just thought there was a lot of weight to that. And it's the case in which getting personal made it universal. Let's talk about Nicole's piece. Very successful, mysterious. I love a piece of art that doesn't show itself to you completely on first glance, and hers is that. I thought she did a great job of taking these materials and using them in her own vocabulary in a really seamless fashion. Yeah, she just pulled us in with the material, the mystery, the telling of the secret that remains secret and thereby gains its power by not revealing itself. Let's talk about some of the pieces that didn't work for us. Should we start with Ryan? I wanted to know him more from those drawings. If I could have looked at those drawings and seen the, the anecdotes that he even discussed, I would have been way more intrigued with that part of the work. The substance of what he was drawing just felt generic and flat and, and not very telling. I just wonder if week after week, if we're getting through to Ryan and if he's learning anything from his critiques. He couldn't articulate a story. He didn't look into the worlds that he opened. Jacqueline's most successful work has been leaving herself open and vulnerable, and I don't feel like she did that. I was so disappointed with Jacqueline. I felt like she was just kind of futzing around with these materials that she doesn't normally use and hoped that would add up to something. We don't exactly know why the hell 
The wall's been sort of divided. She's begun to hang some pipe cleaners. None of these ideas have been developed. I was really disappointed by Abdi. It was just dull and safe. A dictionary is more interesting than that piece. Abdi went really random on this one. It was just a square of objects that he didn't seem to have a very strong connection with. It was almost deliberately banal. This piece starts to show me more and more of a weakness in Abdi's work, a kind of commercial, cliched, too self-satisfied a vision. Have we made our decision? Yes. Yep. Nicole Peregrine, this was an opportunity for you to share something about how you became an artist. And both of you created imaginative and personal pieces only one of you can win. Congratulations. Peregrine, you made a true work of art. Peregrine, I don't often see a work of art that I wish I had made myself, and yours is one of them. I'm really, really, really excited. The cool young gay guys that were my friends when I was a little kid would be proud of me for winning this. Thank you both. You can head up to the studio and please send down your colleagues. Thank you so much. Winning gives me a boost of confidence that I can make it to the end. Hey guys. Who won? Peregrine! My lady. <laughs> All right, let's do this. said that good art is not what it looks like, but how it makes us feel. Your work didn't make us feel anything. Jacqueline, the ideas in your piece weren't developed, and we were disappointed in how guarded you were as an artist. Ryan, you were asked to find inspiration from your childhood, but gave us something that looks like it was made by a child. Abdi, your piece was conceptually and visually bland. Jacqueline, Abdi, Ryan, one of you is leaving us tonight. Abdi, you're safe. Jacqueline, Ryan, one of you will be going home. Ryan, your work of art didn't work for us. It's time for you to go. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. You guys can head back to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. I'm surprised to be eliminated. I think Jackie's piece was the weakest piece in the show. I'm going home. No. My piece was absolutely childish, but I feel like the direction that I took and ran with made a lot of sense. I wish that I could stay to see what future challenges are, but at the same time, now I'll be able to make what I love doing, which is realistic oil paintings, and not have to explain it to anyone. <laughs> Next, on Work of Art. For your next challenge, we will be working in teams. Holy <laughs> I don't know how comfortable you'd be nude. I mean, especially even from behind. Never realized uh, I'd be showing my nipples so large in a gallery. Can you tell me what you're doing on this work? It's a private, you know, sexual act. Fair enough. Your painting looks like green coral that's turning into the Incredible Hulk. To learn more about work of art, the next great artist, visit bravotv.com. Matches, pretty matches.